Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Habib Ali and I am an ICT tutor by profession. In today's lesson we are going to be learning about what is a drop-down list, how to create a drop-down list and how to add an input message to a drop-down list. For today's lesson, I'm using a spreadsheet called the Lesson 64 drop-down lists. And as usual, you should be able to get a copy of this by clicking on the link I've left for you in the description down below. Click the link, it'll take you to my website directly to lesson number 64. And you should be able to download this and then work along with myself. So feel free to pause the video for a few seconds and do this and I shall wait for you okay welcome back so in this spreadsheet I've got some hot drinks um, names of the drinks and the prices they are sold at and the idea is for us to create a few drop-down lists on this section here um, so before we do that let's understand why we need to create a drop down list what is the purpose well by creating a drop down list number one primarily it will reduce or restrict you only to the items that are available within the given list so a person will not be able to input something by mistake or anything else if they wanted to do so. So and it most definitely um, speeds the process up. So let's make a start. We, I am going to select this range because in this selection this is where I want all the drinks or this list to be listed within each of these cells as a drop down list so by selecting the entire range we can do all of them in go in one go rather than doing them individually once you have done that we do need to go to the data tab on the ribbon so by clicking on the data tab we then need to go to this group here called data tools and then this is the command we need called data validation by clicking on data validation we will get this dialog box open with three tabs we will be using these two tabs for today's lesson so under the settings tab we need this box we don't want to allow any value where this is where we need to click and select the list option and this is actually a good example for a drop down list as you can see when I clicked on the arrow I was only given these options I couldn't select anything else nor could I type anything else in this box so this is actually something similar as to what our end product will look like so from this given list I'm going to select the list option by doing so is then asking for the source meaning what do I want on this list now if I wanted I could manually type in all the names of all these drinks coffee and then put a comma and then English tea comma and that way but I don't need to do this because I already have a list on my spreadsheet so all I have to do is click on the arrow here and select my range or my list once I have done that I click on the drop down arrow again and then simply click on OK. When I have done that, I've actually generated uh, within all these four cells a list. Now, you will know that this is a list because you've got a um, arrow going down, which is the indicator for you to um, realize that this is a, there is a list within this cell. So when I click on it, straight away you can see I've got the four options that I chose as my source data, which is basically the names of the drinks. So let's say I'm going to choose coffee for this example and let's say this particular customer places an order then for an English tea and then for a I don't know for a hot chocolate and then maybe a latte um, but the prices again so in here we could manually type in the price for each one uh, but again just for example purposes and for your knowledge and understanding we are going to generate another list in these four cells but this time within the list of each cell we want these four prices to be listed and nothing else so again just by going 
to the data tab remember on the ribbon and then within the data tools you've got you go to the data validation tab and we select the list again and the data source this time the under the source here remember we click on the arrow and we simply select the four prices and then click on the arrow again and hit ok and this time when I select on the arrow um, on, on each of the cell where the arrow is under the price, you can see the four prices are visible. So the price of a coffee is £2.50, and the price of an English tea is £3, and the price for a hot chocolate is £3.50, and the latter is £4. And then I've just pre typed some of these quantities in, you can change them. And here I am under the total column, I've just created a simple multiplication formula to work out the total for each of the drinks. And then just a sum function here at the bottom, as you can see, just to add up the full um, orders of all the drinks. And in this particular order, the full price is £17.50. Okay, so the next thing we are going to learn is how to insert an input message. So let's say if I move my cursor here, I'm just going to delete all of them again. So let's say I've moved my cursor in this cell. I want a message to appear just to prompt me what I'm expecting to do from this list. So we call this an input message. So again, I'm going to select the four cells, go to my data. Um, tab on the ribbon, go to data validation, but this time we need to click on the input message tab here and then simply you can put a title in if you want. This is simply just identifying the title of the input message that you are going to put, but I'm not going to bother putting anything in there. I'm just going to go directly in here and just say select a drink just to again prompt the user um, so that I, they know what they're expecting to do. When I click on OK and then just click away from the range. So if I click on the cell, you can see just here is telling me to select a drink. So I know exactly what I need to do. I need to select a drink. So in this case, let's choose um, English tea. And again, what I'm going to do in the price uh, range of cells, I'm going to insert a input message in these four cells. So again, again, I go back to my data validation under the input message tab in the input message area. I'm going to type in select the correct price because you've got four prices there. I'm just helping um, by prompting them to make sure that they are selecting the correct price. So again, when I move my uh, mouse or select this cell, I've got the message here telling me to select the correct price. So when I click on the cell, you can see select the correct price prompt input message is already there. So again, just reminding me to select the correct price for the English tea, for example. So English tea is three pounds, so I'm going to select three pound. Okay, so the next thing I want to remind you um, about the previous lesson and everything we learned about Microsoft Excel tables and the many benefits that it has. So for example, if I was to introduce a new drink on this drink list, um, by the way, this is not a table at the moment. So if I was to add a new drink here, do you think this list will automatically be updated and the new drink will be included on this list? Well, the answer is actually no because the reason is because it's not a table, the range will not automatically expand um, within the data validation. Um, so I will have to go back into data validation and increase my list. Let me show you a quick example. So let's add cappuccino. Uh, cappuccino on this in, on this list as a new addition and let's say this is five pounds so if I was to type five pounds for example let's use a pound sign and put it in correctly five pounds you can see the formatting or nothing is taking through to the next uh, next entry I will have to do all of this manually simply because this is not a table but let's have a look if this has changed the list at all no it hasn't okay so I'm going to delete these two 
and change this range into a table um, like we did in the previous lesson and then I'm going to add cappuccino and let's see what happens. Now if you are new to this lesson and you haven't learned about the Microsoft Excel tables, I will leave a link for you or give you a suggestion right now. So please click on there and learn everything you need to about Microsoft Excel tables. But um, all you have to do is highlight the range. If I go into insert and select table, straight away this range will be converted to a table. I've got headers on my table, so all I have to do is click on OK. When I do that, so let's say now I want to add cappuccino again on this list. Um, it will take on take on the formatting and everything as you can see the color the size and everything you can see my table range has expanded as well that little sizing handle here on the bottom right hand side tells me that this sizing handle for my table has increased the data range so let's put five pound in there now again i don't need to worry about the formatting everything is automatically taken across within the table now let's go ahead and check whether our cappuccino has been added to our drop down list this is the most important part and voila there you go we have cappuccino on our list so as you can see the many benefits of an excel table so this is something i mentioned in the previous lesson as well by using a table all your data range will automatically be expanded and it will include whatever data you have within your table such as you can see within this list so let's go ahead and choose a cappuccino this time and we know the price is uh, five pounds so you can see even the five pound has been included within this range simply because when i created this list i said i said okay this was the table or this is the range i wanted and it automatically includes everything within the table range let me just complete this order here so let's say there's a hot chocolate on order and the price of a hot chocolate is three pound fifty and finally let's say the customer also wanted to order a coffee and the price of coffee is two pound fifty i hope you're noticing these lovely input messages that we have selected as well okay so this is the end of today's lesson so if you do have any further question as usual please do leave them in the comment section or any comment in general uh, please do feel free to leave them i do love to read all your messages and in the next lesson we will be using the knowledge of creating a drop down list further um, so please make sure you do fully understand this lesson and um, i shall see you over in the next lesson and kindly don't forget to like and share this lesson as well and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so. And until then, look after yourself and I shall see you, like I said, in the next lesson. And goodbye for now.